Good day, today I want to show you how to design a tailored collar. First of all, I trace my basic bodice block and do all my adaptations from a dress block to a tailored block. In this case, you had to add extra space. You had to add extra seam allowance. You had to add extra on the dot. Not take away like in the, in the corset. If you, if you compare the two with each other, this is a bigger one. This one must fit loose. You wear it over a blouse, you wear it over a jersey, you wear it wherever. But it's not like the corset, tight fitted, so it's loose fitted. So we're going to work to the inside of the dart instead of, as we show you, on the corset to the outside of the dart. So here you go in 0.5 to the inside of the dart. The shoulder lines is a little bit longer than the dress block. The side seams is going out. Instead of with a corset, we go in. With a jacket, we go out and we drop two centimeters and we go out one, one and a half centimeters. Sorry for this. It's a little bit terrible. Okay. We go out one centimeter. The fabric is thicker because you work normally when you do a tailored jacket. You work with a wool fabric, so it's a thicker fabric, so you need extra fullness. That's why we go out. The arm hole must be bigger, otherwise your jacket will be very uncomfortable. Then we go to the tailored collar. The tailored collar is very fashionable. It all depends on the fashion determine the size of the lapel and the size of the collar. Now we're going to do a classic tailored collar. Very important you must add your button stand. That's what I'm adding now. And a button stand is determined by fabric type as well as button size. The size of a tailored button is normally two centimeters to two and a half centimeters. It can even go bigger. This we call the button stand. Then the next point that you must determine according to your design is the break point. The break point is where your first button will start. You determine your break point according to what you've designed in the creative class. Say for instance my break point is there, that's where my first button will start. A button hull is always to the left hand side and the button is overlapping onto the button stand. I just want to erase it otherwise I can cause confusion. And we only indicate on a pattern, we only indicate on a pattern the button, the button hole, not the button, not the button, never. Now we extend our shoulder line with two and a half centimeters. The reason for that, this piece become your stand of your collar. A collar consists out of several parts. It got a stand and then it got a fall and a row line. It's where it roll down. The, 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 the fall of the collar must cover the neckline of the jacket when you wear it. When you evaluate this, I evaluate your jacket, the fall of the jacket that's going to be to that side must cover the stand of the collar. Now we're going to create the fold line, fold line of the lapel. It starts where the buttonhole start or your break point is indicated. You draw a straight line to the new shoulder point. The new shoulder point, that's my new shoulder point. It can be two and a half, it can be two. It all depends on your type of fabric. The thicker the fabric, the more the stand. The thinner the fabric, the less the stand. And what you've designed. If you want a real big collar, you must go longer there. Now you take your center back of your jacket pattern and you measure your neckline of your center back with a tape measure and standard to a size 12 that I'm working on now, the measurement is 8 centimeters. Now from your new shoulder point, you measure 8 centimeters, 8 centimeters, let me just turn my ruler to see where's the eight centimeters. There's the eight centimeters. 
mark it, turn it down, draw a line, and again, the same distance that you use here, if you use two and a half, you do, draw a triangle, two and a half, and you square a cross. You square a cross. And this become center back of your tailored collar. So I'm just repeating. This is my fold line. Fold line of my lapel. Fold line of my lapel. It's going up. Extend the shoulder line with 2.5 to 2, 2 to 2.5 centimeter. Draw a square and square out. Draw a triangle, sorry, and square out. The square out now determines your center back of your jacket. Now you go and you decide what your lapel looks like on the jacket right hand side. The reason why you must show it here is that when we fold it and transfer it now with the tracing wheel, you're going to see it's going to this side. This gives you a perception. Where's the size of the lapel? If you want the lapel bigger because it's going to fold there, you must go out wider here. If you want it narrower, you must go in deeper there. If you want it higher, you must go up. If you want it lower, you must go down. That's just logic. Okay. Now we're going to fold it on the fold line of the lapel and trace the color that you decide is nice and big enough to the other side of your paper. I'm just making sure that the paper is very thick that I managed to get through. Then we open it and we did transfer it here. I follow my tracing line. There it is, there it is, there it is, and a little bit up. I'm going to highlight it to make sure that you can see it. And soften the curve. Yeah, on the break point, you must soften the curve. It mustn't be a pointy one. It must be softly, flowily, flowy. Okay, now you're going to combine the back of your collar, 90 degrees again, to the lapel. There's your collar now. Just to take out some of my lines. There you are, 90 degree corner, very important. Very, very important, 90 degree corner. Otherwise, you're going to create a collar like this on center back. If it's a 90 degree, you will have a smooth collar like this on center back. There's your new collar. This is, I uh, call my lapel. Now, this is 2.5. This must be twice 2.5 because, as I said in the introduction, this drop or the fall of the collar must cover the stand of the collar. This is the stand of the collar. Again a 90 degree. I follow the line to my lapel. There you can see now. This must be 90 degree. I'm following it with a red pen. This is my collar. This is a very very important mark. The same as the higher breast point. It's always, in pattern, a very, very important mark. Center front. You can't design if you don't indicate this beforehand. Then there's my rest of my collar. And there's my 90 degrees. There's center back. This is my collar. Now, the main thing to see now is this is drawn onto each other. My original neckline is this. You can see that this collar can't fit into my original neckline. I can't change my original neckline up to here because then my shoulder line will be too short. So my original neckline stays there on the higher shoulder point and I face it in to there. There's my lapel going down 
there you are. So that's my new neckline. Can you see? This is my shoulder point. This is my original shoulder point when I trace it. I can't move my original shoulder point to this point because then my neckline will be too big for my collar. I keep my original neckline and I faced it in with my collar and there's my lapel. This is my lapel, this is my jacket part, there's my style line going down, going up, going to this side. This is my front. This part is my collar. A tailored collar consists out of an upper collar and an under collar, as all the other collars. It's exactly the same. The only thing that differ is a, the upper collar is placed on fold. Use your rulers, please. It's placed on fold. Center back. But the under collar, you cut on the bias. You take the ruler, you trace this down now. Trace it out. Then you take your ruler and you do your grain line diagonally. This grain line, the reason why, when you lay it out, it stretch and it help the collar to be mold over your tailored ham before you join it to your neckline. The, so the under collar, two things. The grain line must change and it must be a little bit smaller. And the little bit smaller is also determined by one, the fabric choice, and two, the style. The style determine how much the collar must be smaller. The reason for the smaller under collar is so that when you do your under stitching, your upper collar is turning to the under collar. And then it makes the under collar bigger than the upper collar. And the under collar mustn't be bigger than the upper collar. So where do we change it? After we trace the collar, we change it there. You cut it smaller, the under collar smaller, with two millimeters, and you face it into the point of the collar. So two things, I repeat, the under collar, the grain line, differ, and it must be two millimeters smaller facing into the point. Thank you very much. That's all for today.